I I'm so tired of bigotry. I'm so tired of racism. I'm so tired of social media hate. I'm so tired of politicking. I'm so tired of gossip. I'm so tired of grudges. Aren't you? Don't you want God to cause justice to roll down like a river? That's the day of the Lord. Look at what he says at the end of verse uh, six. This is great. At the end of verse six, are you guys turning back there with me? Okay, oh, you're there. You're faster than me. I got my new Bible. I got to get used to the pages. You know what I mean? Being confident of this very thing that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it or complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Now, the Israelis are like, okay, that was clever because usually they would say the day of the Lord. The day of the Lord was referred to in the Old Testament. And a lot of people think of it as heavy. And if you read it in the Old Testament, it is. But what you have to remember, it was actually a beautiful day. It was a day when justice would be meted out. And God would make everything good again. I'm so tired of bigotry. I'm so tired of racism. I'm so tired of social media hate. I'm so tired of politicking. I'm so tired of gossip. I'm so tired of grudges. Aren't you? Don't you want God to cause justice to roll down like a river? That's the day of the Lord. And that's, but we can't just wait for it. We have to fight for it now and bring his kingdom to earth, even as it is above. Just as Philippi was to Romanize the culture around it, so too we heavenize the culture around us as citizens of heaven. Paul plays on that. We talked about that in our last two studies. But Paul changes, so we fight for it today. But Paul changes the day of the Lord to the day of Christ. So he's doing a little switch, like, oh, I see what you did there. You're putting Jesus really high up, Paul. The day of Christ. Now, in Isaiah, the day of the Lord is referred to as the time when the glory, don't, don't you want this day to come? Are you ready for this? The glory of the Lord will cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. Can I read, can I say that again? Isaiah says, this is the day of the Lord. He, he describes a day when the glory of the Lord will cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. Now, that is not a mark of laziness where we say, okay, well, let's just wait for God to make everything right. Let's just burn this place down. No, we want to bring the kingdom of heaven to earth right now as we anticipate that day. We want to fight to see that that day is mimicked here on earth, that we imitate and copy that day here on earth right now. It's the day when wrongs are put to rights and we wanna do that now. So, so Paul is saying that a day of Christ is coming. What, what's, what's he mean? He means that history is headed somewhere. It's not one wave of emergencies after another where we hand the criminal calendar of Europe to our, uh, uh, you know, prodigy, progeny and posterity and call it a history. History is not cyclic. The universe burns in a great conflagration every 3,000 years, the Stoic says, and, and it's just, we repeat the same events and people like in a play over and over again on repeat. History is not meaningless. It's not an ontological, existential, nihilistic abyss. No, it is headed somewhere. You have to get this when you go to university. When you go to college, because the more you study philosophy, and I love studying philosophy, the more you're gonna think everything is pretty pointless and cyclical. But if you have this worldview, what you realize is basically history is headed somewhere. Just as he finished the first earth, he's gonna finish the new creation. Ben Corson here, thank you so much for watching my new YouTube channel. Make sure to smash that like and subscribe button, share this video with all your friends, and hit that bell so you're notified every time a new video comes out. May the hope be with you.